Let's get over to our man, Mr. Steve Rhodes, as we do each and every Monday at 20 past the hour. And don't forget, folks, Steve has an outstanding show here every trading day. 10 to 11 East, 11 to 12 Eastern Standard Time. Also, has a great newsletter, and Mastering Probability. Now, it's very easy to get Mastering Probability, folks. Come over to our website at TFNN. Go on to newsletters. You'll see it right on the left-hand side. You can get Mastering Probability for one month for $159. Six months for $695, which is a savings of $199. And one full year for $1,195, which is a savings of $593. Now, folks, if you haven't joined the Tiger's Den yet, we have a trading room, the Tiger's Den. It's an amazing room. We have amazing traders, okay? Everyone is hands-on right into the room and last night of course we've had a we'll have a big market down right well steve rhodes was in the tiger's den last night six o'clock okay bottom line you know given his take on the market by six thirty, guess what given his take on the market that everything is bottomed okay it's a dollar to join folks okay that information there that you know the nqs went from what Minus 59, because I was in there also, up to, you know, the first run was 240, up 240, that is, okay? The bottom line, come over to our website, get in the Tiger's Den. It's not that, you know, it's it just, it's just a great room. Steve Rhodes, what's happening, brother? Hey, Tom, sorry about that. I uh, had some trouble logging in, but really, here, uh, sorry to hear about the uh, black mold. That's, oh, that's man, no, it's a mess, no good. Oh, you should! You, my face blew up, man. We didn't even know what was going on, and no, for sure. yeah, bad scene. But we got it under control. We're moving everything. We've been hustling for the last couple of days, oh, uh, so it's going to oh. be fine. But listen, man, last night amazing call, Steve. Just oh, really thanks. so cool, so yeah, cool. Thanks. Yeah, you know, hey, thanks. With, uh, with all the charts, by the way, folks. Okay, everything was there. Okay, tell you what, so. we're gonna we're gonna actually show the folks what what good that awesome. un okay, unfolded. Cool last night so um and it all really started so i was i was uh, really gone most of the weekend and I, I had a chance to sit down in front of my computer at 5 45 last night so i punch up all the charts see how the yep. markets closed and i was like oh wow and the first thing was that i noticed that the spot fix index had closed at a one-day rate of change above plus 10 percent Yes. And the, that's represented on this chart here by the blue arrows. And yes. it was a study that I had done um, quite a few years ago. And when I had done that study, which was take a look at spot VIX that had a one-day rate of change about plus 10%, we typically saw a bounce or a bottom within 48 hours. Over the probably the last three or four years, that's pretty much changed to uh, within 24 hours. So okay. we had that. We had that pattern that was out there and said, okay, prepare for a at least a bounce. Doesn't, we don't know if it's a bottom. And then last sure. evening, I, I didn't hear you, but I think you were you were talking about it, 555. I got I all my yeah. last 10 minutes to get everything together. And then I just wrote in the Tigers. Then I saw the few people were in there that said, you know, Friday's VIX closed higher by 12.46%, more times than not. A bounce or bottom ensues. I found that the best bottom signals come from the 30-minute Roadsman indicator signals. At the close right. on Friday, the ES, the Russell 2000, the Dow confirmed that pattern. The NQ needs a bullish reversal candidate to confirm a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. So these were the charts that I had posted inside of the den. I took a snapshot of it. And you can see here, Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. We've got a hammer candle that confirmed the ES mini, a hammer candle that confirmed the Dow, and a hammer candle that confirmed the Russell 2000. 30 minutes later, is when the NQ went ahead. So I, I suggested that the folks inside the Tiger's Den look for some type of bullish reversal candle. Once we got that inside the NQ, that would confirm that the uh, that the bounce attempt was in. Whether or not it bounced or not, you had the patterns that were associated with both a one-day rate of change of about plus 10%, and then the confirmation that we look for. And it's typically the 30-minute time frame charts. What's really nice, Tom, is when you get all four ES, yes. EYM, the NQ, and the Russell 2000 to agree. When we're you know we've got a unanimous opinion here. It didn't right. mean that the lows wouldn't get taken out, but at least it was uh, the trade was in. And exactly. here, if we take a look at the snapshot of as a 126, I think you were going over it as of right then and there. You know, we've certainly seen this turn into a nice rally. Now, as of 127 this afternoon, I'm looking at my screen right now. It's still active. The spot fix index showed a one day rate of change of minus 13 percent. Right now, we're at minus 10.37. Just like the above 10% has a meaning, the below 10% one-day rate, rate of change has a meaning as well. And when you have when you have a fall in that VIX below minus 10% 10, 10 minus 10 or below, it typically is an initiation move to higher price. Now, I found that those initiation moves to higher price work best when you're already at lows, when the market has been coming down. So we've got that. Now, if at 4 o'clock, 
uh, uh, about uh, 47 minutes from now. That spot VIX closes below minus, uh, from a one-day rate of change, below minus 10% out there. We should expect that we at least get another rally for at least one more day. I'd say one to three more days. Another great use of the VIX is how the relationship that it has between its 50-day exponential moving average. The bottom panel of this chart, the red line is the 50-day exponential moving average. The top portion, this is the S&P 500, the green bars, rectangles, uh, squares out there, those are periods of time when the spot VIX is below the 50-day exponential moving average. The yellow is when it's above. So generally speaking, um, when the uh, spot VIX is above the 50-day exponential moving average, sellers are the ones that have an edge or, or the ones that are in control. That's the position that we're in right now. So I, I caught just the end of what you were saying about uh, looks like just a sideways move and we're getting ready for a further move lower. Um, these charts are, are agreeing exactly with, with that conclusion. So the question should be, if we do get this uh, initiation to higher price move, a spot VIX index below minus 10%, where is it likely the price will target? And where it would likely target, and we could take a look at a few other areas, but the, 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 the best outcome, I believe, would be if we could rally into 55, 27, 25. Now, the interesting thing here, Tom, is that is the exact point in time to the minute when uh, the Apogee um, phase came in. Now, a lot of folks may not be familiar with Apogee and Perigee. Apogee is uh, the point in time when the uh, moon is furthest from Earth during the current lunar cycle. Perigee is just the opposite, when the moon is closest. So these are the remaining Perigee and Apogee pivot points. And if you take a look at the uh, columns on the, uh, on the, towards the right-hand side, you've got Eastern Standard Time, Daylight Savings Time out there. So everything has been converted to ephemeris time so that folks can note that point on their chart. If I go back here and we take a look at the rallies, a couple rallies that we had after that pivot point had formed, Tom, we can see that price stopped right in there. So that 52.27.25 is a real key level of resistance. Now, price can take out resistance, but if but that's the area where I would be looking to sell the uh, ES Mini, at least at this stage here, as a 325 in the afternoon. One reason to suggest that this rally, I'd mentioned that it could last uh, two to four sessions out here. In uh, bull markets, the blue arrows here are showing you these are consecutive days to the downside. And you see, most of these are two two bar moves to the downside. We had one three bar move to the upside. If we're in the beginning of a, a market that's going to trend lower, I don't want to necessarily call it a bear market, but just simply we've got a change in trend and we're going to start heading lower out there. Rallies should last, again, the, the exact opposite. They should they should rally two to four bars out there. So if we get that initiation move signal, Tom, below minus 10%, one day rate of change, we should rally. And I think we rally up into that uh, pivot point out there that I given. Here's an example of the two bar moves to the upside uh, in a market that is trending to the uh, downside. And now just, that's just a last reminder out there for everybody. We are in that unfavorable seasonal cycle inside the market for the S&P 500. So September's a bad month. We've got all kinds of topping signals. I agree with you. We either go sideways or we start moving down. But I think we get at least a two-day a two rally. Hello? Uh-oh. Well, folks, uh, we lost Tom, but I can tell you one thing. We are going out to a commercial break, so stay tuned. We'll be back with some great programming. Take care.